they knew about Christianity and the Prophet Isa So the second point I want to discuss is uh, the da'wah of Isa in that in, the, in Palestine in that region in Bani Israel. And we know that uh, the people at that time had received revelation beforehand from Musa and that these people had received revelation and what happened after he died and even during his life that day they went astray from this revelation that they released, they, re, uh, they received the message and then they were left this message and they committed acts of zina and they committed acts of hypocrisy and corruption and greed and all other sorts of things at that time and so that society become like the society we have today where people live a life of excess there's corruption there's greed and there's hypocrisy and there's a similar time and a similar situation to the time of Isa Salatu Wasalam when he came in the same situation where people were living life like this and so what happened, he came at a time and he started to advise people about this life they were living and the, the things they did on and one of the things you would find is that how you know the rabbis would actually cheat the people and so what the rabbis would actually do, they would use the name of religion in order to deceive the people, in order to make more money yeah? and it's a bit like how you find today how certain people use religion yeah, to deceive people, to achieve what they want and you find certain people would also abuse their positions they have in society so these politicians and these leaders that we have in our communities and our societies how sometimes they abuse their positions so if you remember you know in the summer you had these MPs yeah, who were supposed to be representative of our communities who were representative of the people but what would happen you know they would spend they would claim for ten thousand pounds to build a new duck pond a new duck house or they will claim thousands of pounds to decorate the house or they'll spend, you know, they will claim thousands of taxpayers' money to go off on holiday with their wives and their mistresses and all other sorts of things. And it's funny how, you know, thousands of years later, we live in the same sort of situation at the time of Isa, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where this corruption and the abuse that the leaders had at the time is similar to the position that we're in today. So what we find is the corruption. You know, like I mentioned, and the corruption today. You know the. You know how the uh, governments take bribes. So, if you remember a few years ago, there was this BAE scandal where they took bribes from Saudi Arabia for certain uh, for certain planes and for certain equipment. You know, these MPs would often take bribes from certain people. Uh, they call it cash for questions. So they would often take money by certain people to ask the government questions in in the prime minister's question time. You find hypocrisy at the time of Isa Salatu Wasalam, and you find hypocrisy today. Yeah, Iraq. You know, this claim that we've gone in to save the people. We've gone in to bring freedom and liberation to the people of Iraq. And we can see the hypocrisy today because they're not interested in, in bringing freedom and to liberate the people of Iraq. They aren't interested in the security and the life and the well-being of the people of Iraq. They're there to achieve their own objectives. The dishonesty, like at the time of Isa, Isa wasalam, and the dishonesty of today. Who remembers the 45 minutes claim? <coughs> Yeah, when Tony Blair was making his claim about we should go and attack Iraq, what did he say? That they had weapons of mass destruction that they could launch within 45 minutes. Yeah? <laughs> they had weapons of mass destruction that they could launch within 45 minutes. And he went around in Parliament saying to all the MPs, you've got to back, our, you've got to back us in our war against the people of Iraq because of this claim. 45 minutes, you know? All it takes is for them to press one button and in 45 minutes we can have a, a nuclear missile being fired towards us. And on that basis everyone gathered around and agreed that we should go attack Israel. And it's only now when we review and the, and the, the reviews are taking place and they're being examined in the courts, they suddenly begin to realise, holy minute, this whole 45 minutes was a complete fabrication. It was a complete and utter lie. Not a single shred of evidence. In fact, even the UN weapons inspectors that went into Iraq and they couldn't find a single, a single evidence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But yet again, if you remember the lies that were being per uh, perpetrated before the war, you know, the 45 minute claim, the dodgy dossier they call it. And the greed. Yeah, the greed of the rabbis at the time of the, uh, the Prophet Isa, wasalam. And look at the greed today. You know, the greed to go into Iraq to get the hands on this oil to get their hands on their gold in the various different places, to get their hands on these conflict diamonds in Africa. You know, these countries, how they go around, they're only interested in these material gains, this material wealth. So they don't care what destruction they bring to the people. 
You know, they don't care what destruction they bring to the environment. You know, this whole issue at the moment, they're talking about, you know, climate change. Yeah, they're worrying about the climate. Who are the biggest polluters on this earth? You know, who are the biggest polluters and contributing to the global warming? It's America and Britain. And surprise, surprise, it's these two countries who are now forcing developing countries to sign up to these protocols when themselves aren't interested in doing it. So again, you find the greed they're only interested in filling their own bellies, yeah, filling their own coffers, uh, regardless of what happens to the people. So again, what you can find is this, the similarities that we face in our times, even though we're thousands of years later on, you know, the technology's progressed and people have progressed, but yet we find ourselves in a similar situation. And so what we can really think about is how the Dawah of Isa and Salatu Wasalam against this greed and corruption is like our work today. How our work today is to correct these people and to bring them towards the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct this greed and the corruption and the hypocrisy that exists and to show them the light of Islam and to bring them to the light of Islam so that's the, uh, the court of justice what are the other aspects that we, we, can, we can learn about? Uh, the disciples the Hawairun they are the very famous uh, the, the companions of Isa much like how the Prophet sallam, he had Sahaba Isa wasalam, had these disciples, the Hawairun and uh, these were people who, were, who helped Isa wasalam, in his message, in his risala to the people at the time and it's mentioned in, the, in one hadith that they said um, this is the, the narration of the hadith the disciples said, we are the helpers of Allah we believe in Allah and we bear witness that we are Muslim our Lord, we believe in what you have sent down and we follow, our message, and we follow the messenger so write us down amongst those who bear witness yeah, this was the statement of the Hawairun, the disciples and these were people who helped Isa in his message and his da'wah amongst the people just like how the Sahaba helped the Prophet ﷺ in his message in, the, in Makkah and in Medina and he helped spread these messages amongst the people but what you find, what happened to these disciples? a very similar situation to what happened to the Sahaba and the Muslims at the t- in, the, in the time of Makkah what happened? the lies and the propaganda began began. they were being accused of being all sorts of things you know, spread, spreading dissension amongst the ranks spreading lies amongst people taking people away from their, from their history and, and breaking up their families you know, making them worship false gods and things like that just like how the lies of the Quraysh like we saw in the video film how they lied about what the, the Prophet Sallallahu and the, the Muslims were doing they were trying to break the traditions of thousands of years and ancestors to make them worship this one Allah <coughs> so the people of the time of Isa they started to spread these lies and these propaganda yeah? they claimed all sorts of things they claimed that these people, the only people that follow Isa were who? were the poor people you know, the slaves and the outcasts these were the only people that follow, the Prophet, uh, that follow Isa wasalam. and this fact hits a similar situation to what the Quraysh made with regards to the Sahaba what did they say about the Sahaba? Who followed Sahaba? Mm-hmm. It was the youth and it was the slaves and the people that were oppressed, people like Bilal who was a slave at the time these were the types of people who followed uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu so they started to spread this propaganda amongst their communities, amongst their people fast forwarding a few thousand centuries forward to today's times who were the people that are claiming are terrorists in today's society? Who are the people that are claiming these people, the only, be- the only reason they're becoming Muslims or the only reason they're calling for Islam is because they're poor or because they're weak or because they're oppressed? It's funny how they're using these same arguments today against us as Muslims. Yeah? So what they're saying about, you know, these, these people are poor. They're saying the only reason why these Muslim countries are calling for Islam and want Sharia is because they're poor. You know, if we give them lots of money, they're going to want Islam, they don't care about Islam. So let's give them lots of money and they'll be okay. And again, the same, they say the same thing about us. Yeah, the only reason people like us are turned to Islam, yeah, the only reason why we've got a, a problem with Islamists and these terrorists in the Muslim communities is because why? They're poor or they're illiterate. Yeah? So what are the government plans? What are they trying to do to stop this? They say, what we need to do, let's give them money. Let's give them education. If we give them money and we give them education, then they won't become Muslims or they won't be interested in Islam. They'll be interested in other things. So again, it's funny how, you know, the same situation that happened thousands of years ago is happening today. 
The claims they made thousands of years ago that the only people who followed the prophets were people who were weak and were oppressed. 